Why should you reverse engineer your competitors' videos? To a lot of newbie video marketers, their first instinct is to come up with a video that they think is hot. They swear that this video concept that they come up with is going to sell like hotcakes. I've seen this a million times before. The ending is very predictable. The idea that you thought was so hot fizzles out quickly. It turns out that your idea is not the best thing to come around since sliced bread. Far from it. Talk about an expensive mistake. If you want to truly dominate your niche through video marketing, you need to understand that you do not have to reinvent the wheel. Seriously, you just have to figure out what your competitors are doing and let them do your homework for you. Imagine that. Your competitors end up doing your homework for you. How? Pay attention to what they're doing. They're doing it for a reason. They produce videos that fall within a narrow range of topics for a reason. That reason should be obvious. It works. Start there. If you're looking for the top reason why you should just reverse engineer your competitors' videos instead of coming up with something absolutely new, it is this. It gives you a head start. The second reason is you get to build on their strengths and improve on their weaknesses. Usually, being the last person to the game is a big disadvantage. But when it comes to video marketing, it's actually a big advantage. The guys who started before you, they got out of the gate and they stumbled. And they stumbled again. And they stumbled some more. You can learn from their bad experiments and their failed video projects. You get to cherry pick from their successful videos to come up with your own video marketing success. Best of all, you can pick apart their areas for improvement and come up with ways to beat them at their own game. Do you see how this works? Don't beat yourself up over the fact that you are late to the party. In the world of video marketing, being the last person to the game is actually one of the biggest competitive advantages you can ever have. You just have to know what to do. That's the bottom line. Reverse engineer your competitors' videos and figure out the industry standard. Once you have a clear idea of what the standard is, develop your own brand. Of course, coming up with a successful brand is not going to happen overnight. It takes quite a bit of practice. But if you know what you're doing, things will fall into place. One key trick that boosts your video's SEO. What if I told you that there is one simple trick you can use to increase your video's visibility on YouTube? In fact, this little trick might even boost your video's rankings on Google search results. Excited yet? I know you would be. Here's the thing. It's not anywhere close to what you think it is. Usually, when people think of SEO, they think about keywords on pages and backlinks. I really can't blame you for thinking that way because that is standard SEO. Even a newbie search engine optimization specialist would figure this out. The problem is, ranking a video on YouTube is somewhat different from ranking on Google generally. Forget about backlinks. Instead, focus on the core technology that YouTube brings to the table. Did you know that when YouTube processes your video, it actually creates a transcript? Now, you can choose not to make this transcript public. When people click the closed caption option on your video, they can see the transcription if you make it available. You can turn this off. Regardless, Google, which is the technology behind YouTube, is actually paying attention to the words in your video. A lot of video marketers are clueless about this. They use the old tricks. They stuff keywords in their description, their titles, and their file names. Unfortunately, they do not actually talk about the keyword. In fact, for a lot of older videos, these videos have nothing to do with the keyword they are targeting. Google has become smart. The old tricks no longer work. Here's the simple trick. Mention your keyword in your video. Sounds simple, right? Well, there's a complication. Mention it in context. That means there has to be other keywords that give proper context to your keyword. You can't just target one keyword and repeat it over and over again in your video. That's not going to work. In fact, that's going to work against you. You might even get penalized for that. Instead, you have to come up with related keywords that give context to your target keyword. For example, if your target is the phrase, baby shoes, you should target baby wear, baby clothes, baby fashion. Do you see the big picture? When Google processes all these different but related keywords together, it sees the context. And your video might get ranked higher for your target keyword. Sounds awesome, right? Well, you're not out of the woods yet. There is one final hurdle. Your video must still be engaging. If your video does not get views or does not get clicks, YouTube is going to bury your video. Pay attention to these factors so you can get a nice bump up in YouTube search results. Too many marketers fail to do this and they end up failing. I can't even begin to tell you how many times I've seen very effective videos fail at the very end. Don't get me wrong, these videos were well produced. It's obvious that whoever came up with these videos spent quite a bit of time, effort, and money producing them. They're very slick 
and they have amazing scripts. They communicate really well, but they're missing one key element, and that's why they failed. I'm willing to bet money that these videos did not even cover their costs of production. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised that the vast majority of these otherwise slick videos I've seen did not make any money at all. Sounds sad, right? Well, you'd be sad too if you spent all that time, effort, and money only to have very little to show for your efforts. How do these marketers fail? What are these videos missing? Well, please understand that a great video is not just about graphics. It's not just about having an awesome script. It's definitely not just about having great content that informs people. Those are very important, but you have to have this additional component. Miss out on this and you will end up wasting your time producing yet another video. What am I talking about? Call your viewers to action. There's a reason why you created that video. It's not like you had nothing else better to do. You want to make money. Call your viewers to action so they can put extra dollars in your pocket. It's that simple. Not only that, but you have to call them to action repeatedly. Sounds simple, right? Well, here's the complication. You have to call your viewers in context. You can't just say, click the link in the description box below. That's not going to work. Why? Everybody's doing that. What makes your video stand out? What makes your video distinctive? Doing that won't make you stand out. In fact, that kind of call to action is all too forgettable. You have to call your viewers to action in context. How do you do this? You pitch them on the benefit they will get when they do what you want them to do. For example, if I'm promoting a Bitcoin trading system, I would say, if you're tired of losing money or making very little money on Bitcoin trading, click the link below for the answers you need to succeed. You see how this works? You appeal to their problem. What is their problem? They're not making any money or they're losing money. You then connect your solution and tie it to an outcome. The outcome, of course, is to turn things around. I know it seems simplistic, but it works. Don't just say, click below or click the link. That's not going to work. You might as well have not said anything. Never fail to call your viewers to action. How to use the KLT sales method using videos. What is KLT? Sounds like some sort of medical procedure or a complicated massage. Maybe it even sounds like some sort of high-tech jargon. Well, KLT is going to determine whether you make money in video marketing or not. That's how important KLT is. You better wrap your mind around the concept. In fact, I would suggest that you focus on it intently. Otherwise, you're going to be spending a tremendous amount of time, effort, and resources trying to make money with videos only to fail. That's how important it is. It is no joke. What is KLT? K stands for no. L stands for like. T stands for trust. Sounds good so far? Well, here's what brings it all together. When was the last time you bought something from a total stranger? I would venture to guess that your answer is never. You're hardly alone. Most people would buy only from somebody they trust. It doesn't matter how long it took to get that trust, but they will only buy if they feel they can trust the other person. Do you get it now? Well, how do you get to the trust stage? That's right. You have to feel that you like the particular option being offered to you. Which brings up the question, how do you get to like a particular option instead of other options? This means that you have to know enough about your problem for you to think that you would prefer one option over another. That is the KLT process. Your job as a salesperson, and you are a salesperson even though you're using online videos, is to walk all your viewers through the KLT process. They start out trying to know quite a bit about their problem. Then they like a particular option, and then you hold them by the hand until they trust your specific option. You have to use video to make this happen. How does this work? Well, the K videos are videos that teach viewers. For example, if you're selling baby shoes, you teach the viewer the importance of buying baby shoes. What are the benefits of putting shoes on kids? Next, you compare the different types of baby shoes out there to the type that you're promoting. Your videos must get the viewer to like your particular option. After that, you come up with video reviews of different models of the option you are selling, and you build trust that way. That's how you use KLT with videos. It's all about using the right kind of video at the right time. That's how you get people to trust you. Otherwise, you're not going to get a sale. Forget about it. How to use the cheapest marketing video type most profitably. Video marketing actually involves many types of videos. There's no such thing as a magic bullet video. Seriously. There's no one video type that would sell everybody all the time. That simply doesn't work. 
Different people are more likely to trust a video spokesperson. Fair enough. Others have a soft spot in their hearts for a whiteboard animation. Cool. Even others prefer slideshows. Now, you may be thinking that these different video types are pretty much the same. No, they're not. At the very least, they're priced differently. If you're looking for the cheapest type of video marketing, go with slideshows. This should be obvious. Basically, you take different pictures and you come up with captions. You edit them together. Maybe you play a soundtrack in the background and you have yourself a nice, professional-looking slideshow. Now, you may be thinking that since these are cheap, they're not all that persuasive. Think again. You just have to use them in the proper context of the KLT sales method. Some slideshows are to develop knowledge. Other slideshows are to get people to prefer your particular method. And other slideshows are to get them to trust the specific product that you're selling. Again, slideshows are not much different from the other videos in terms of the KLT sales method. What makes them stand apart is the fact that you can create a lot of them and they're dirt cheap. Use your secret weapon. There's one secret weapon that would really turbocharge the impact of slideshows. The best part to this secret weapon is that it doesn't really cost much money. What am I talking about? Your voice. Either you narrate your slideshows or you hire somebody for cheat to do it. Regardless of how you do it, just do it. Why? When your slideshow has an actual human voice playing over it, it gives it a personal touch. The viewer doesn't get the impression that they're back in high school being forced by their teacher to watch some boring slideshow video. Instead, the voice element in the slideshow creates all sorts of emotional imagery. This makes your slideshow more powerful. Now, you may be thinking that you need to be slick to do this. No, it's okay to make mistakes. As long as you're personable and you impress the viewer, you'll be fine. How do you impress people? Very simple. Impress them with facts and results. Let me tell you, people brag all the time. That's not going to impress anybody. Why? Everybody does it. However, when you show people that the stuff you're talking about is real, you know they will sit up and pay attention. That's how you impress with facts and results. Finally, call the viewer to action. This is the key. Always call them to action. Three key marketing video types you need to know about. A lot of newbie video marketers are under the impression that all marketing videos are pretty much the same. Maybe they define sales videos as spokesperson videos. These are videos where you see an actual person speaking to the camera and connecting with the viewer. Maybe they would define it as some sort of nicely produced slideshow. Others prefer animation. Interestingly enough, there are different types of videos that you can use for sales. They have their own set of strengths and weaknesses. Understand the different types you have at your disposal so you can make informed decisions as to which videos to make. Here are just three key marketing video types. There are a lot more out there, but you need to know about these three. Once you've mastered these three, then you can experiment with the other types. Whiteboard videos. Whiteboard videos feature a hand that quickly draws a picture. This is an illusion because the picture actually already exists. The software used to create these videos simply hide parts of the picture and then reveal it to give the illusion that the hand is drawing the pictures. I know it sounds cheesy, but it's also very effective. The main reason why a lot of people like whiteboard videos is that they are being revealed information. It's not like you're just telling somebody, okay, these are the facts. And then let's move on to the next set of facts. Instead, when people see the hand moving around, they see that the concept is being fleshed out in front of their very eyes. The downside to typical whiteboard marketing videos is that they are produced by software that often have very limited graphics libraries. It is no surprise that a lot of these whiteboard videos look suspiciously very similar to each other. How can they not? They use the same graphics libraries. Unfortunately, if you were to come up with your own graphics library, this is going to explode your costs because you're going to have to get those graphics from somewhere. Video spokesperson. This is the most common type of sales videos. There's really not much to explain. You have a person either reading off a teleprompter or reciting memorized talking points. The reason why video spokespersons are very powerful is because there is a human-to-human -human connection. The moment you look at somebody in the eye and there is a sincerity in your face, you can connect. I know that sounds simple, but it's also very powerful. The downside with video spokespersons is that they're very expensive. Seriously, I don't know about you, but the last time I got convinced by a video spokesperson, the person had to speak for several minutes. 
Unfortunately, most video spokespersons charge by the second for every hundred words. If you want somebody to speak at length, it's going to be a costly proposition indeed. Slideshows. Slideshows are very cheap to make. I mean, how complex could it be? You're basically just taking music in different pictures and possibly even video clips and compiling them together. Well-made slideshows are smooth and slick. Now, the biggest advantage of slideshows is that they're so cheap that you can make a ton of them. The big disadvantage of slideshows is that they are fairly flat unless you include a voiceover. Unless you have a nice voice and can speak professionally, it's going to be a problem for you. Seriously. Because you're going to have to spend money on professional voiceover artists, and a lot of them charge by the word. Keep the types in mind for your campaigns. Get a clear understanding of the different video types available out there and get a clear read on the type of video your target market prefers. Three key considerations to think about when using whiteboard videos for marketing. You probably have seen whiteboard marketing videos before. They all start out with a hand or a blank screen, and then a hand shows up and draws images while a voiceover plays or some text appears explaining what's going on. They're very effective because they tend to do an efficient job at explaining concepts. Make no mistake, when you talk to somebody and you have a concept in mind, sometimes things get lost in translation. You're not quite able to get your message across clearly and effectively. When you pair that with images, it's much easier for things to click in the minds of people you're trying to convince. Remember, at the end of the day, you want them to reach into their pockets, whip out their wallets, take out their credit cards, fill out an online form, and send you money. That's the bottom line. That's the name of the game. There's no shame in that game. Whiteboard animation can be an effective tool in making that happen. Another way you can turbocharge whiteboard animation is using cartoons. You can use caricatures. Believe it or not, they create the same face-to-face -face type of video connection as a video spokesperson. The great thing about using cartoons is the fact that they are much cheaper than video spokespersons. The problem with whiteboard animations is their cost if you choose to turbocharge them. If you were to just stick with images and canned music, you'll be fine. You probably would be cranking out tons of these videos for a few bucks a pop, if that. That's how cheap they are to make. The problem is, the moment you start including a voiceover, your costs start to explode. Now, your costs will remain low if you're doing your own voiceover. But if you're insecure about your voice, or you feel that you're just not a good speaker, or you have a low-quality voice, you're going to have to spend on a professional. These people are not cheap. They charge per 100 words, and it can get very expensive if you have tons of whiteboard videos. Whiteboard videos that are just made with images and diagrams are cheap to create, just like slideshows. But the moment you include voice, all bets are off. Keep that in mind. Three key Fiverr services that will turbocharge your video marketing business. Video marketing does not have to be expensive. I know you probably have heard otherwise. I'm sure there are lots of professional services companies out there that would love to convince you that you have to pay top dollar. But at the end of the day, you don't have to spend an arm and a leg on your videos. You can create slideshow after slideshow, whiteboard video after video, and still have a lot of money left. However, if you really want to increase the impact of your videos, you're going to have to spend a little bit of money. Now, how much money you end up spending totally depends on how many extras you want to pack into your videos. Don't get me wrong. A well-made slideshow video can be effective, but if you really want to maximize its impact with as little effort on your part as possible, you would have to spend on extras. Here are three key Fiverr services that will greatly enhance the quality and impact of your video marketing materials. Intro and Outro An intro or outro is an animated or musical piece that plays either in the beginning or at the end of your video. This is a nice little branding element. You may have to pay a little bit of money up front, but the great thing about these clips is that they are a sunk cost. This means that they get cheaper and cheaper the more you use them. You might get a really nice intro, kind of like the Pixar animation. But after a while, people start associating your brand with your intro. This is a good investment to make. Sound engineering and editing. I understand that if you're just starting out, you probably are working on a shoestring budget. You just don't have enough money to come up with the very best videos. I understand that. But here's the thing. If you want to develop a solid brand in your niche, you need to reinvest some of your earnings into quality control. The best way to do this is to invest in sound engineering or video editing. A little bit of money invested in these types of services can go a long way in lifting the overall quality of your videos. Why would you want to do that? Well, you want to come up with a polished brand that would attract people in your niche. Again, this is an investment. 
You don't have to do it right out of the gate, but you're going to have to revisit this sooner rather than later. Voiceover. Make no mistake, unless you're doing your own voiceovers, this additional element can get quite expensive. This is why you have to invest in voiceovers very strategically. For example, if you crank out slideshows normally, maybe you make it a point to produce a slideshow with a voiceover for every 10 videos you make. Whatever the case may be, a little bit of voiceover work can go a long way in helping you develop a solid brand. Use the three key Fiverr services above to turbocharge the impact of your marketing videos. Do you have to have the best looking videos to make money in your niche? I remember the first time I watched a sales video, and I hate to admit it, it looked like a pile of garbage that caught fire. And that's putting it mildly. The audio was scratchy, the video was blurry at some parts, but guess what happened at the end? That's right, I reached into my back pocket, took out my wallet, fished out my credit card, and filled out an online form. I just sent a couple of hundred dollars to whoever made that video. That's how effective that video was. Now, it had nothing to do with the grainy video images. It had nothing to do with the crappy sound system. It definitely had nothing to do with the weird voiceover that seemed like the person talking had pneumonia or some sort of hormone problem. You know what got me? The total video. It packed enough value that it spoke truth to me. Seriously, it delivered value at the right time and at the right moment to produce the right moods that hit me in the right way. Don't get me wrong. I could have bought from a ton of other people. But the video was able to speak to me with the right message at the right time to produce the right effect. I'm sharing this embarrassing experience with you to clue you in on the fact that your video doesn't have to be slick. I know it sounds shocking, but it's true. It doesn't have to look like an Academy Award winning director produced it. It just has to have the right elements. Unfortunately, in this game, you will only know how to project the right elements at the right time after enough practice. This is why I suggest that you produce video after video after video until you get it right. Don't expect to get it right overnight. That's just not going to happen. But the more you practice, the better you get at it. I can guarantee it. Why is elemental video optimization so important to your profitability? I know that's a mouthful. Elemental video optimization. That's a lot of syllables. However, it's also extremely important. You have to understand that when people produce marketing videos, they know full well that the vast majority of their videos are going to fall flat. They're not going to do the job that they were made for. Most people can admit that. The problem is fixing the problem. That is the problem. I've seen this a million times before. A marketer would see that a video is obviously not performing. People are not watching it all the way through. People do not even click the link. And people are not sharing. So what do they do? They come up with a completely new video. That's right, they overhaul everything. They change the title, they change the video itself, they change the description, everything. I wish I could tell you that this has a happy ending. Unfortunately, it usually doesn't. Most of the time, these marketers spend a whole lot of money only to end up with nothing. Why? They burn down the house. They burn down the whole video. They replace it with another video. Sure. From time to time, somebody would come up with a video that was a hit. But here's the problem. They don't know why it succeeded and why the previous one failed. This is why I suggest that you wrap your mind around the concept of elemental video optimization. I know that's a fancy term, but all it means is that instead of overhauling your video all at once, do it piecemeal. How do you know which part to change? It's very simple. Each video has different elements. There's the title of the video, the description, the video itself, and categories, tags, and what have you. Each of these are elements. When you're optimizing a video, start with one element. For example, start with the thumbnail for the video. Maybe you can come up with five different versions. See which version gets the most clicks in place. Come up with more versions of that successful thumbnail and see if you can improve the click-through. Once you reach a point where you cannot improve performance anymore, then you move to the next element. Maybe you should change the title. Come up with five different versions. Repeat the process until all elements of the video have been optimized. That's how you play the game. That's how you increase your profitability. Otherwise, you're going to be playing the game the exact same way as most other marketers. How do they do it? They just take shots in the dark. Last time I checked, that's a lousy way to get a bullseye.